In today's video, I'm using Dollar Tree products to make two projects for my Christmas home decor. So here we go. First, I needed one of these little elf happy holiday signs, a plush stuffed elf, and then two of the wooden drawers. I'm only going to be using the actual drawers, not the boxes that they came in. And then two wooden blocks. And you can see the blocks fit really nicely inside the drawers. The first thing I did was to take a little square of sandpaper, I just tear off a little piece, and I sanded off the glitter from the Happy Holidays. I'm going to be painting over this part of the elf, so I wanted it to be nice and smooth. And then I went ahead and painted the elf body or the sign or whatever you want to call it with red chalk paint now full disclosure i actually wound up going over the red with green later on and you'll see in the final product the elf body is actually green but um, it had a base coat of chalk paint underneath and that and that allowed me to use my green acrylic paint really easily to go over the red i just liked the way the green looked better and then I used the same chalk paint and I gave two coats of paint to the little wooden drawers. And while my drawers and elf were drying, I used my Rust-Oleum linen white paint to give two coats to my blocks. And then I set all my wooden pieces aside and I grabbed my plush elf and I cut off the arms and legs, <laughs> which sounds terrible, but that's what I did. The idea here is that I wanted it to look like my little wooden elf had arms and legs and that he was holding the little drawers because that's going to be my little Christmas countdown. So I was careful here not to completely just cut the arms off. I wanted to make sure that I was going to have enough like material to make the arms as long as they needed to be I wound up actually cutting a lot of that extra material from the body off the arms themselves were long enough but I just wanted to make sure because I only had one elf to work with and I didn't want to mess up and I did the same thing for the legs I just left a little extra material until I knew then I used my hot glue and I glued the two little drawers together and you can still see the heart cutouts here, but that's not going to matter because the blocks will cover that. Then I took my little elf guy and I didn't glue him on yet. I was just gluing on the arms and the legs first, but I kind of wanted to make sure that I was positioning the arms correctly. So it looked like they were coming from like his shoulder area. And once I had them positioned correctly, I just used my hot glue to glue the arms onto the boxes. And I used a little extra glue to glue the fingers to the front so that it would really look like the elf was holding the boxes. And then I repeated the same process for the other side. And you can see here, I did wind up trimming off most of that extra fabric. I wanted this to be pretty flat because I wanted the body of the elf to sit pretty flush up against these boxes. So I made sure to just glue everything down really well. And here's what it looked like once the arms were attached to the box. Then I went ahead and I got my elf legs and I kind of did the same thing. At first I kept the legs together and then I realized I really wanted them separate because it just looked more realistic, like, it, like the boxes were sitting on his lap. So I cut the legs apart and I kind of glued one to each of the boxes. And uh, don't do what I did. At first I wound up gluing them to the table. You have to flip them over and glue them to the bottom of the box when the bottom is facing up. Otherwise you glue your legs to the table and that's not good. <laughs> so then here's what the whole thing looked like before the elf body was attached. Then I took some super fine sandpaper. This is 800 grit and I just sanded off my blocks. This is a really great trick in between coats or at the end of your coats of paint to make them really smooth you can use 800 grit and it gives you a really smooth finish and i wanted it to be smooth because i was going to be painting on numbers onto these blocks 
And then I pulled out some of my Dollar Tree number stencils. It was important to find a font where the six could be flipped over and also used as a nine because that is the key to making the right blocks. So I went ahead and used it just as a classic stencil. I used a pencil and just traced the numbers onto each of the blocks. And for a Christmas countdown, so this is just for a Christmas countdown, I needed block A to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and block B to be 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, and then the 6 get, gets used as the 9. So that was important for me to keep straight. And then I found some rough patches on my block, so I just used my sandpaper to sand off those rough patches. Then I used my Arteza acrylic marker in black. I'll link that in my description box. And I traced all of the numbers. Now, I will tell you this. I had intended to use those Dollar Tree number stickers, and I could not find my stash of them. I don't know where they are. So if I had found those, I would definitely have used those instead because this process took a long time. So it probably took me 30 to 45 minutes just to trace all the numbers because I wanted them to look nice, you know. I mean, to color them in with the black marker. But if you decide to make this project and you have those Dollar Tree stickers, use those instead and then you can Mod Podge over them and it will save you a bunch of time. <laughs> but in the end, I was happy with how they turned out. I think they look great and you know in the absence of the stickers this was a good solution because I don't have a Cricut yet. I plan to get one but I don't have one yet. <laughs> and so here's my A block and my B block. The 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. See here. And then the 0, 1, 2 and 6. There's the 6 and you can flip it to be a 9. And then the 7 and the eight, there it is. And then I attached my little elf. You can see here it's green now. And I attached it using hot glue to the back of the blocks. The only other thing I would recommend doing is using wax on the blocks and on the red boxes. I didn't have any more wax to go over my chalk paint. Uh, so I need to get some and I will actually do that as a final step. There's the back of my elf because I always try to make the backs of my projects look nice as well. But I am super pleased with this. The total cost for me was $6 plus my paints. I think he's just adorable and I can't wait to find a spot for him for my Christmas decor. And for my second project, I'm using three of these wooden arrows that I bought from the Dollar Tree as well. And then also this, I got this last year, but they do have new ones. If you don't have one with the black and white, you could always use scrapbooking paper to do the buffalo plaid. Uh, or you could just obviously do a different pattern or just paint it, but I was happy to have this. So I removed the twine from the arrows and I used my little putty to fill in the holes. And this project was inspired by two channels that I love to watch. One is Leanne at Simply Enjoying Life and one is Danielle at Homemade Vintage. I'll link them both in my description box. Danielle bought something that I based this project on and I saw Leanne actually use one of these arrows as a house, which inspired me. So I like to give credit where credit is due. That's what my inspirations were. So then I took my little thankful thing and I used my chalk paint, which I use on everything, and I gave it two coats of chalk paint. Again, it should also have a coat of wax on top, but I have run out and I'm actually going to Michael's today and I will get more. Then I also used a little bit of my sandpaper to sand off where I had put the putty to fill in those holes. Off camera, I also painted three of these blocks from the Tumbling Tower game at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use those as braces. And once the putty was dry and sanded off, I took my chalk paint and I gave each of my little houses, arrows, houses, <laughs> a coat, two coats. It was two coats of white chalk paint. Once the white chalk paint was dry, I got my painter's tape. I actually finished up this roll for this project, so I needed to start a new roll. And I taped off the roof of each of my little houses. 
and I made sure to like press down the painter's tape really well so I would get a good seal. But then a little trick, I always put a coat of whatever the base coat is. So in this case, it's white. So I paint it over the seam of the painter's tape and that just gives a much nicer line when you pull it up later. And then I painted the roofs of each of my houses black. And I did the same black and white color scheme on the backs of all of my houses as well. Just in case they get seen from the back, they will still look nice. And then once everything was dry, I pulled off my painter's tape and you can see that nice clean line so there's no bleed under. And uh, I was really pleased with how that turned out. And I had taped both sides so that they would both be nice and clean. And then I wanted to write joy to the world. So joy would be on one, two the would be on the middle, and world would be on the third one. I printed it out in three different sizes. They all look the same, but they actually were three different sizes, and I picked the one that I liked the best. I think I used the font called The Skinny. It's a font I downloaded from defont.com, and it's 85 point is the size. Then I used the technique where I color on the back of the paper with a pencil, and it basically turns it into carbon paper. And then I used a nice pointy mechanical pencil to trace the words onto each of the houses. Then I used my Arteza acrylic marker again. This time I turned the point around and I used the fine point and I traced my words. And that fine point works really well for this font. And then I took my little blocks from the Tumbling Tower game and I glued them to the backs of the houses. And those are just gonna help the houses to stand up on my little base. And it also gave me just more of a surface to glue. I used my carpenter square to mark the center of the base. And then I started by gluing to the in the center, just so I could kind of center everything off of that one. So I glued that down first, and then I glued joy, and then I glued world. And oh, I wanted to show you, I at first put it back too far, so I just pulled it up, and you can see it pulled a little of the paint off, but that's not gonna matter. I could have touched it up if I wanted to, but it wasn't gonna be visible. But I just wanted to show you that, you know, I don't even always get it right on the first try. <laughs> And then here I am just gluing the other pieces down. And here's what it looked like once the pieces were glued down. And then I wanted to add a little bit of greenery. So I got these garland ties. If you ever see these at the Dollar Tree, pick them up. They are super useful. So I just snipped off a little piece of one of the garland ties and I formed it into a little wreath and I wanted to hang that on the roof of the center house. And then I cut pieces off of another garland tie and just tucked those behind the center house. And then I got some of my grandma's greenery. It's vintage greenery. This is not everyone's thing, but I love vintage Christmas. So I decided to add this to my project. If you don't like this, you could definitely find regular berries at the Dollar Tree. And so I tucked my vintage greenery in on my garland ties. And then I used another piece of vintage greenery to accent my little wreath that I had made and I glued the wreath to the center of the roof of the middle house. And here's the finished product. I love this piece. I can't wait to work it into my Christmas home decor. The total cost to me was about $4 and change because I only used two of the garland ties and I had the greenery in my stash. Here's the back so you can see in case anyone sees the back it's it looks nice. And I absolutely love it. And that's all that I have for you today. If you've enjoyed this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, you may wanna check out this one that I'm linking on my end screen. I made a two-tiered tray from Dollar Tree Products, and I'm currently using that as my centerpiece on my kitchen table. Until next time, thanks for watching.